Hi Flosstube! My name is Laura and welcome to my channel Loves Rubber Stamps Needle Crafts. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. And if you're brand new to my channel, I hope you find something to be inspired by. Today is Sunday, May 19th. And for today's video, I thought I would talk to you about my stitch mania and how that's going and do a recap of the Midwest Cross Stitchers Retreat that my mom and I were lucky enough to attend beginning of May. I have quite a few FFOs to share with you today and some hauls, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, the first couple things I want to share are a couple of FFOs. My first one is on my last video I had shared a, a pattern that I had purchased off of Etsy called Bumblebee and I was able to start the little bee and finish it and FFO it. So I made it into a little plant poke. And I think that bee is so cute. There's a lot of back stitching in it, but it really brings out the character and gives them so much life. It looks so good. So I stitched this on 28 count Monaco that I coffee tea dyed. And to finish it into a plant poke, I couldn't really find any tutorials online, so I just kind of winged it. I mounted my stitching on a piece of sticky board that I covered in batting. And then I put some mini pom-pom trim around the edge. And then I just covered the back with stitchery tape, which is a really sticky double-sided tape. And I had found these quarter inch wooden dowel rods that were 12 inches long initially. I cut mine down to about eight inches. I just stuck that to the back of the sticky board. And then I put more stitchery tape down and then I just covered the back with felt. And then I got this little plant of lavender flowers from Hobby Lobby. And I just stuck my little bee in that. So I think it's really cute. It's great for spring and summer decoration. My next FFO, I was going through my bin of finishes and I decided to, to frame up my Dimensions Cozy Cub piece because I wanted to take it to retreat because this piece was one that I was working on for my very first uh, Midwest Cross Stitchers retreat that I had went to. And since I had him finished, I wanted to get him framed so I could take him for the show and tell table. Sorry for the glare on the glass. I found this frame at Hobby Lobby. It was in the clearance section. It was normally $29.99 and it was on sale for $7.50, so I really like how he turned out. And I just framed that myself. So those are two of my FFOs. I do have more to share with you, but I'll talk about them in their little categories. So we'll go ahead and talk about my Stitch Mania. Um, my Stitch Mania isn't going how I originally planned. It usually never does. Um, I started off really, really good on Stitch Mania. Um, day one, I actually had a start, a finish, and an FFO all in the same day. So that piece was a piece that I was going to do for one of my Stitch 9 challenge pieces. It was the Brenda Gervais Acorn Harvest Kit. So I started this on May 1st and I was able to finish it and then I FFO'd it all on the same day. Turned out really cute. The little squirrel comes in the kit for you to finish it on and all the little pieces. The only thing you got to supply is the batting and the glue. So I was really happy with how that came out. So 
the first weekend in May was the Midwest Cross Stitchers Retreat, so I didn't get to do a lot of stitching after I finished my squirrel. So the next piece that I worked on was at the retreat, and it was my Red Birds by Maria Barber. This is what it'll look like when it's finished. And it's in the Just Cross Stitch November, December 2011 issue. And as you know, there's usually not a whole lot of stitching that goes on at retreats if you've ever been to one because you're busy talking and walking around seeing what everybody else is stitching. So here's where I got to. So at retreat, I pretty much just worked on all this green over here, kind of expanding the leaves. That's being stitched on 28 count lamb's wool jubilin that I got at Hobby Lobby. I was hoping to have another solid day of stitching on that, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that or not. I thought I would share the project bag that that stays in. This is the back of it. I got this project bag from Linda Jo, Pretty Southern on the Midwest Cross Stitchers Facebook group. They did a patriotic exchange and she was the person that drew me. And this was one of the gifts that I received in my package. And the inside is really pretty stars. Oops. The vinyl front. The next project that I worked on at retreat was my Lizzie Kate Promised Me. I didn't get a whole lot done because I was obviously at retreat. The only thing I had finished, or the only thing I had done when I started working on this was the D and the word stronger. So I was able to put in the A and the N, the word than, and then started the leaves. I'm stitching this on 32 count lamb's wool linen, which is the called for fabric. And that doesn't have a fancy project bag, so. This next piece is also a new start for me, and it's also one of my Stitch 9 Challenge pieces. And this is a piece that's kind of held up the rest of my Stitch Mania progress. Um, I started this one after we got home from retreat and the very first day I worked on it, my plan was to work on each of my whips for Stitch Mania and, and or work on my whips from my old Stitch Mania pieces and my Stitch 9 challenge pieces for two days each. Well, the very first day I worked on Mrs. Delicious was the one I started. I made some decent progress. I was able to get pretty much this half of the pattern done. So I thought, oh, with my second day, I should be able to at least get the whole turkey done or make more significant progress. And I did. I was able to do about half the turkey the second day. And then I thought, well, I'm so close. Surely it's not going to take me very long to finish this. So I'll just keep working on it and kind of adjust my plans because I should be able to just knock this one out. Well, I'm still not done with it and I haven't had as much stitchy time since then. So when I do get to work on it, I don't get to work on it for very long. But it's so close to being finished that I kind of want to keep going on it just to get it finished because it's so close that I hate to put it away. But on the other hand, it is also keeping me from getting more done that I wanted to for Stitch Mania. So I'm not quite sure exactly what I want to do. If I want to just bust it out 
and be happy that I got two new starts and two finishes for Stitch Mania or just pick another whip and work on that one for and try to continue with the plans I had initially made. So we'll see, but here's where I am on her. As you can see, you can't hardly see the, the white at the bottom, but all I have left to do is her face. And then I have half the border done on the bottom and I have the border on the top. And then I have a few just random leaves and this will be done. So I kind of want to just finish her. She is kind of in timeout right now because when I was stitching last night on this border, I realized that one of my landmarks wasn't lining up correctly. And then when I was looking at it, I realized that when I stitched the O, there's supposed to be two spaces between the I and the O, and I only left one. So this, the OUS should be one stitch over because when I started my border from the S, then my border stops one stitch too soon. But I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. Just the very last stitch of her beak will be one past where the border ends. So this is just for me and my um, display. So I, I'm not going to frog it. I'll just live with it. I don't think my husband's going to look at it and say, oh my gosh, her little beak sticks out one stitch too far of the border. If he watches this video and hears me say that, then he probably will. But So I'm liking how she's turning out. Even though she's kind of holding up my rest of my Stitch Mania plans. But she'll be worth it when she's done. And she is living in this project bag. This is one that I won as a door prize on my very first Midwest Cross Stitchers retreat that we went to. Um, it was a bag that Michelle Rudy, farm girl, had made. Cute foxes. And the inside is just a pretty orange color. So those are my whips that I've worked on for Stitch Mania so far. Um, now we'll go ahead and talk about the Midwest Cross Stitchers Retreat that my mom and I went to. Let me move this stuff off here quick. So, my mom and I got to go to the Midwest Cross Stitchers Retreat that was put on by Michelle Rudy Farm Girl in Minnesota, and it was the first weekend in May. And we were super lucky because um, Priscilla and Chelsea, the Real Housewives of Cross Stitch, were there to teach us a class, a finishing class on a project that we received in advance so we could have it stitched to bring to the retreat. And it was really awesome to meet Priscilla and Chelsea in person. They're super sweet. They definitely put a lot of work into the retreat and the class that they taught. Um, it was a lot of fun, and if you're lucky enough to meet them in person and take one of their finishing classes, you're going to love it. Um, it was awesome. And I have to say that Cash was there, and he is the sweetest little guy. He was so well-behaved. I don't think I heard him cry or fuss once. He was just all smiles and playing and such a sweet little little guy. So the, the class that we did with Priscilla and Chelsea was to finish this awesome Liberty piece. This is the finish. So we had to pre-stitch this piece to bring to class with us. There's my bow. And Priscilla showed us how to that how she does her torn ruffles. And I think after that class, I don't think Priscilla would ever let me use another glue gun in her presence again because it kept getting the nozzle kept getting I don't know if it was like gummed up or something, but 
the glue would stop coming out so I would try to put it on the paper to, to squeeze it to get it started and it would just shoot everywhere. It was crazy. Um, anyway, this awesome design is a new series that Priscilla and Hands On Design are collaborating with. And this piece, the Liberty set, is actually going to be the last release in that series. So this design was exclusive to the Midwest Cross Stitchers Retreat for the first year. So eventually this design will be available for everyone to stitch. It'll just be the last one they release. So we were lucky enough to get a sneak peek of the first one while we were there. It's these gorgeous sunflowers that they've since shown that's coming out in June. And it's beautiful. So this is going to be another series that I have to stitch all of them. And we just finished this on magnets. And it comes on this board that you get at Hobby Lobby. And then you can swap them out once we get them done. So that class was super fun. And I love how this turned out. And like I said, they did an awesome job teaching the class. And I know it wasn't easy to teach, you know, 70 people how to, to do the finishes. So definitely a lot of hard work and it's really appreciated. One of the other cool things that we received um, as a free gift was the chalk fold designs are going to come with two pieces for each set. So this is the little accompanying piece that comes that will come with the Liberty set. So this is just a little circular piece. And so as part of our gift from Priscilla and Chelsea, we got the, the chart for the piece to stitch. So hopefully I'll be starting that soon. And I was lucky enough to, as soon as we got home, run to Hobby Lobby to get the little tray piece that Priscilla finished that Liberty piece on. I know after she showed these at retreat, they sold out online on Hobby Lobby like instantly people just going online and ordering them. So we have a Hobby Lobby close to where I live. So first thing Monday morning when they opened, I ran to Hobby Lobby and they actually had two left. So I was able to buy one for myself and one for my mom. So she can stitch her piece too. But if you're lucky enough to have Hobby Lobby around and you haven't been able to find it, it's in the spring collection and that's the item number is five nine one one four two five if you're lucky enough to find them and then some of the goodies that we received from the midwest retreat we got the this project bag it's got this cute little bell jar tag on it And we received this pattern in our bag. It says Minnesota Midwest County Country Fair from Twin Creek Primitives. And our theme for the retreat was Country Fair. So they designed this pattern for us. So that's really cute. And then we also received a tape measure to measure our ruffle fabric. We had received this pattern from Raise the Roof. It's the Liberty Fence. And we received this basket of buzz from Shakespeare's Peddler. It's a little basket of bees. And then Kimberly with the Fat Quarter Shop was awesome enough to give everybody at the retreat one of the cross stitch journals that you can record 
information on your projects that you're starting. So that was awesome. So thank you very much, Kimberly. So those are the items that came in our goodie bags. And then the door prize that I won from there was this little Just Nan Gingerbread Santa Mouse. It's just the patterns and a few of the supplies. It's not the full kit. But that's really cute. We also participated, my mom and I both participated in the smalls exchange that was put on. So we had to stitch anything that was either summer or spring related. It could be anything you wanted um, or fair related if you wanted to, since that was our theme. So the piece that I ended up winning in the exchange draw was designed by Jamie Nelson. And it's this really pretty Lizzie Kate spring piece that she finished on like a wooden crate. And she just put magnets on it so I could stitch the other pieces and swap them out. I do have this series and I did plan on stitching it. I hadn't started any of them yet, so that's awesome. So spring would be finished and I just would have to do the other three. And in addition to that, she also stuck a pattern in there, which was the Easter holiday hoopla from Brenda Gervais with that needle and thread. This was one of her new designs and this is awesome because I had, didn't have this one yet. And it came with some fabric. So thank you, Jamie. I love it. Did an awesome job. And I'll try to insert a picture here of the piece that I made for the exchange. It was my in the berry patch um, from all through the night. I finished it on a galvanized bucket with some flowers inside. So if I can, I'll insert the picture here. The piece that my mom had stitched for the exchange was a little um, Joan Elliott bunny from her Bunny Biscornu piece, and I actually finished it into a pillow for her. Um, so if I can, I'll insert the picture here of what her piece looked like for the exchange that I finished into a pillow. And then one of the cool things that we were able to participate in at retreat was uh, there was a raffle that was put on um, with donated prizes that you could buy tickets for and put in to try to win. And all of the proceeds from that went to Emily C. Eclectic Possessions, uh, her place that she works for was doing a fundraising drive for children in foster care, and we were able to raise over $4,000 for her fundraiser through our raffle at Midwest Crest Teachers Retreat, so that was really awesome. And I was lucky enough to win two raffle prizes, which is awesome because there I wasn't expecting to win any and my mom was also lucky enough to win one of the raffle prizes. So um, my mom, the raffle prize that she won, she um, wanted the bags that was like project bags. And it also had a pattern and some material in it. Um, and the pattern that she won was one that I have been wanting for a long time. I just hadn't bought it. So she went ahead and gave me the pattern and the beads and the fabric because she couldn't stitch on the fabric as kind of a thank you gift. So thank you, mama. But this is the pattern 
It's the Glendon Place Sunflower Mandala. Sunflowers are one of my favorite flowers, so. And this came with the bead pack to do it. So I think the colors in this are so pretty, and I bet it's going to be gorgeous with all the beads and stuff. So I can't wait to stitch that, courtesy of my mama. And the fabric that came in, came with that was this 36 count hand dyed Marvelous from Color and Cotton. And mom isn't able to stitch on the real small count fabrics. She needs to stitch on usually Ada's. So she gave me this piece. So thank you, Mom. Love it. And then the first thing that I won for a raffle prize was this project bag. And I'll take this stuff out. This project bag. So cute. And I believe this came from stitch toolbox because that card was in the bag the cool thing about this is inside it has this little ring that you can put your threads on so that's really cool and it just hangs inside there it's all connected so i love that and then inside the bag there was this cute little llama Needle minder. And then this pattern from Twin Peaks Primitives called Buy Local, which will make a cute companion piece to the fair one that they did for us. And then it also came with this kit from Chessie and Me to make called the 1801 house and it's the kit and that came with the bag too and the funny thing is is in the exchange piece or the smalls exchange my mom actually her piece that she won or received was this all stitched up by Michelle Rudy farm girl and it was so cute finished up so it was kind of neat that mom got one that was finished and then I got the kit so I could do it for myself so we could be twins. So that was the first raffle prize I won. And if that wasn't enough, I also was super, super lucky to win a $100 gift card from Jen Stitching Niche on Etsy. So I can't even believe that I won that because pretty much anybody that bought tickets had put their name in for that one. And so there was a ton of entries and I just happened to be the lucky one to get chosen. So I was able to go to Jen's store and pick out at least a hundred dollars worth of patterns, which I had to buy more than that. But, um, and then she sent those to me, so I'll show you the ones that I received from her store. With my gift card that I won from Retreat. So the first thing I did was I ordered some of these egg buttons. I got three blue and three white. And I wanted these for, um, I have a little chicken Henrietta that I stitched that I'm trying to figure out a good finish for her, but I thought these might be cute to incorporate somehow in the finish of her. And then I ordered Jen's pattern, Kate hey Chicky. She designed this one, and this is the kit that comes with the floss, the fabric, and the two little buttons. So that's cute. And then I ordered the autumn acorns from the blue flower to go with my autumn squirrel. I had the autumn squirrel already. I just didn't have this accompanying pattern. 
And then I was able to get my spring fling bunny that I didn't have yet. And if you remember in my last video, I had, or I had ordered a fabric from Misty Purcell from Luminous Fiber Arts, the pink solo dye that I thought would be cute with this pattern. So I was able to get it. And then I got Patriotic Poppies from Brenda Gervais with thy needle and thread. I got Boo and Bobby with thy needle and thread. It's kind of on a with thy needle and thread kick for my choices. I got Christmas at Winterberry Cabin with thy needle and thread. Then I got O Tan and Bomb by Brenda Gervais with my needle and thread. And then I got Pumpkin Farm from Blackbird Designs. I got Agnes Platt Strawberry Sampler from Blackbird Designs. I really like this one. I like that brick house too. And I love the little bee house. That's cute. And then I got Harvest Delivery from Plum Street Samplers. The little horse is kind of hard to see. So those are the items that I got with my gift card from Jen Stitching Niche that I won for the raffle. So I really appreciate that, Jen. And thank you so much for that awesome prize. And then the last thing from Retreat is they had a freebie table. And one of the patterns that I was able to get off the freebie table was this gorgeous bleh, Mirabilia called um, Holly from the Pixie Couture Collection. So that was awesome. I didn't have her and she was really pretty. So thank you to whoever put her on the freebie table. I will enjoy stitching her. So that's kind of all of I all that I have for my stitching up until this point. So the rest of my video is going to be haul. So if you're not into haul, I appreciate you stopping by and hope you'll visit with me again. And if you like haul, we'll go ahead and show you what else I have received. Um, I'll start with a couple of flosses that I received. I got my fat, my threads of the month from Color and Cotton. And these are this, this month's designs of last month. It's really pretty. That orange is super bright. It's called Toucan Lily Pad Sapphire. It's really pretty blue. Really jewel tone colors this time. This is called Royalty. And this is called Storm Clouds. So those are really nice. And then I ordered some flosses from Hand Dyed Fab Hand Dyed by Rolanda off Etsy. I got some Christmas colors. So those are pretty. I every year I get this um, the keepsake cross stitch calendar. I don't know. It's from Craftways. They put it out. They always send me the sneak peek or you get a look at it. And if you don't want it after 30 days, you can send it back. But I always end up keeping them. So this was the one for next year. And the neat thing about these is they come with a calendar that has the big, big days. And then it comes with 12 designs for you to cross stitch, but they send you a booklet that has the actual cross stitch patterns in it so you don't have to use your big calendar. So I really like that. And then they always send a little pocket calendar 
and I always use these. I stick them in my billfold, put my like my work schedule appointments, and it's just handy because it's such a handy size. It's got a decent area to write, and I love these, so this is the main reason why I keep them. But the pattern on the cover of this, you do get that the chart to stitch it too. So that one's really cute. So I'll kind of show you the designs that come in the calendar this year. There's these four. I really like the snowman. And then there's these five. And then these four. Really like that birdhouse too. So some neat patterns in that set. And then I bought this calendar. It's a 2019 activity calendar off Amazon. It was only 10 bucks. And I saw somebody else talk about this on one of their videos. I'm not, I can't remember who it was, but it's the cross stitching activity calendar. But the cool thing about this is all of these designs you get as cross stitch patterns. So. And I thought there were some really cool ones in there. I love the elephant, and the owl, and the fox, the turtle, the giraffe. I pretty much love almost all of them. They're really pretty. And again, that was on Amazon, and they were only $9.99, I think. I'm not sure if they still have them, but you can go check it out. And then I was at Hobby Lobby the other day, and they had some... Realist kits on clearance. So I picked those up. I got this one. It's called Owner of the Jungle. And this one was normally $49.99. It was marked down to $12.49. And I got Afternoon in the Country. This one was normally $49.99, also in marked down to $12.49. Got this one called Rooster. And this one is normally $39.99, marked down to $9.99. And then this one called Feline Family. My son loves cats. And was $29.99 marked down to $7.49. So those were awesome deal. And then I'll, the rest of the stuff I have to show you is pretty much fabric. I seem to get a lot of fabric this time. The first thing is I placed an order with Xjude Design off Etsy and I got some of her seam binding ribbons that she hand dyes. I got this color called dark beaver gray. And I think her seam binding ribbon is awesome to do those. If you watch Vanna's tutorials on how she does her ruched ribbon with the beads, I think the seam binding ribbon would be perfect for that to do some finishes like that. And I always order two, so I got two of this color. Got two of this one called Rusty, Rusty Bells. Thought that'd be pretty for fall. And this one's called Melting Snow. It's got some gray, kind of white splotches. 
actually have a project in mind to use that on. This one's called Grape Othello. Really pretty purple. And then I always have to order some of her fabrics. She sent this little Tuscan silk blue as a thank you gift. So I ordered three little pieces of 9x12 size called Little Bunny. It's a really pretty, kind of a light tan color. Light tannish gray. I thought those would be good for like little ornaments or something. And then I ordered this 7x13 piece of terracotta bream. Terracotta bream. It's a really pretty rust color. Thought that'd be neat for a little fall haul. Fall small. And then I ordered this piece of what it's called Witch's Brew. This is a larger piece. So that'd be pretty for a Halloween. That's a 17 by 29 piece. And then I got this piece of sampler green. It's 13 by 19. It's more of a kind of a pea, pea green. It's actually looking darker than it really is. It's more of a kind of an olivey, olive kind of pea green color. So that's pretty. And then I got this color called Whisperer Night. Whisperer Night. It's a dark sapphire navyish blue. That would be pretty for like a night design or maybe even some of the chalk designs on that one. And then I placed an order with Sunny Dyes Fabrics. I haven't placed an order with them for a while. And I've got three different fat eights of fabric. The first one is called Deep Pool. They, they do a lot of painting on their fabric, so it's different. So I have no idea what I'm going to put on this one, but I thought it was kind of neat. Maybe something Arctic or mermaid or something little mermaid so it's called deep pool and then i this one is called harvest and this one actually has gold like glittery sparkles on it So I thought that would be pretty for either a Halloween or a fall piece. And then the other piece I got from them is called Tornado. It's kind of a greenish gray color, kind of the color of the sky right before Tornado. I thought that would be neat for a Halloween piece. So those were the three that I got from them. Then I got my color and cotton fabric of the month. I get two pieces. One is neutrals and one is any color. And this one is a 32 count Lugana called White Tea. And it's just kind of a creamy, kind of off-white color. That's a good neutral. And then this one is called Dusk. And it is a 36, 36 count linen, really pretty gray, with kind of a blue, bluish undertone. That was really pretty. Then I ordered this piece 
called Petal from Luminous Fiber Arts. It's a really pretty light pink. I don't have a lot of nice light pink colors for spring stuff. Um, this one is a fat eighth of the 27 count Linda. I hadn't got to try that yet, so I wanted to try that fabric. It kind of feels like a Monaco. That thicker kind of fabric. And then I got two of my hand-dyed fabrics from Stephanie, Fabric of the Months. The first one I got was Isol. It's this really pretty purple. And then I just got this one in yesterday. It's called Sorbet. And it's this really pretty kind of a limey green with pinks and greens and teals. Be really pretty for a summer piece. And then I got my under the sea fabrics called Freya. And this one I received in a Opalescent Lugana, the 32 count. It's really pretty greens and blues with sparkle. I don't know if you can see the sparkle in it, but it's an opalescent. So that is all I have for you today. I appreciate you stopping by. And if you're still doing mania, I hope that you're having fun and that you're able to stick to your plans. And like I am, um, I'm still hoping to just keep working and just get done what I get done through the end of the month. And any progress is good progress. So I think... Want to thank you for stopping by and happy stitching.